Well, hello, everyone. It's good to have you tonight. Let's all grab a hymnal, turn to hymn number 539, and let's all stand. Hymn number 539. And uh, I think you know it. Sing it with me on the first. Here we go. Who can cheer a heart like Jesus by his presence all divine? True and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how to call him mine. All oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. We like it? All right, I know it sounds, that's for sure. And um, for those of you that are online don't have a clue what we're just doing, um, uh, Bethany is playing the grand piano. The baby grand is what it's referred to. And uh, so uh, it was tuned today. And so wanted just to see how it sounds. And so voila. So sing it with me on the second. Here we go. Love of Christ so freely given. Grace of God beyond decree. Mercy higher than the heaven, deeper than the deepest sea. Come on now, here we go. All oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. You're doing a good job on the last. Join with me. By the crystal flowing river with the ransomed I will sing. Come on now. And forever and forever, praise and glorify the King. Here we go. Come on. All oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. Praise the Lord. I hope and pray that Jesus thrills your heart each and every day. And uh, he is such a good Savior. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Our Father, thank you that we can come together here tonight on a Wednesday, but it's because, Lord, you thrill our hearts. You challenge us, you encourage us, and Lord, we are duty-bound to pray one for another, and Lord, to increase our faith and to grow in your precious truth. So Lord, bless us tonight. Meet with us. Ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, praise the Lord. It's been, a, it's been a, a busy day. It's been an exciting day to see all that God has done. And uh, we're so very thankful for uh, the many things that we've heard today. And we'll be sharing a little bit more about uh, that tonight. But, uh, but anyway, it's good uh, for God. Uh, it's good uh, because we know God is good. And, uh, and uh, even when things don't seem to go our way, it's still good. And so praise the Lord. Hymn number 27, 
276, please. Hymn number 276. Jesus is all the world to me. Sing it like you believe it. Here we go. On the first. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He Now you got to give it all you got. Sing so hard your false teeth may fall out. No, just kidding. But sing hard, all right? Come on now, on the last. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now. I'll trust him when. Life's fleeting day shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy. He my friend. Amen. It's good to have you. Um, tonight we're going to skip the, uh, uh, the offering. And so um, tonight you get to go to church free. So just kidding. But we will skip it tonight. Uh, it's good to have you tonight. Hope, hopefully uh, you've had a wonderful day and uh, God has blessed you. We We've been looking forward to tonight and hope and pray that, uh, first of all, thank you for coming and we hope and pray uh, tonight will be a blessing and encouragement to you. Um, by chance, just in case you didn't notice, uh, it's cold outside and the weather outside almost was frightful because uh, it did try to, it, it spit uh, snow throughout the day and and got a little sleet in there every now and then, and and it could have been, you know, a lot worse, of course. But uh, uh, it's just a reminder of what's coming, I believe. Uh, now, I don't know. Obviously, I'm not a weather forecast person, but uh, but anyway, uh, we've already had our first snow. Uh, you know, I believe it was last weekend, last uh, Saturday, and and then uh, of course had a little bit today and all that and. Uh, and it's going to be cold, so just hope you're ready for it and uh, all of that. Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, we want to uh, let you know that uh, out in the foyer uh, where the tracks go, we, we uh, bought some old tracks. I say old because it's what we you know, normally get. Uh, and uh, there are, uh, there's a little bit of a difference. Really, there's only one difference on them. If you can tell me what that is, I'll be surprised. Uh, but also, we've got some new tracks out there. Uh, we've got a, uh, a new track called Peace, and uh, it is, uh, it is this, uh, it is, it talks about the turmoil that's in our world and the peace that is only found in Christ. And it's a, it's a new track, and so that's out there. Uh, there's a track out there that gives the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's, um, it has a lily on the front of it. That's a new track. We've got two Christmas tracks out there that 
we've we've used in the past and so so anyway we, we ran out so we replenished them and I say that because uh, you you know if you need to replenish your tracks that you may carry with you whether in your purse or in your car or on your person in some way uh, so just just be mindful of that all right I tell you you may not necessarily can speak to someone but you can give out a track and at least leave the information with them. And so uh, our, the church's name and address and all of that is on the tracks. And so uh, it, uh, it'll, it, it's all there. So just want to remind you about that, okay? All right. Well, we want to take some prayer requests tonight. And um, first of all, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, let you know about... Uh, Brother John Blanton had a, a surgery today on his heart. Uh, his heart was out of rhythm. And so today they uh, put it back in rhythm. So uh, I told John in front of the doctor, I thought something had been off ever since I've known him. But uh, he's now on in rhythm. So, But uh, he... Uh, he um, uh, really struggled with his legs tonight, um, and uh, so we're hoping that maybe through this, getting his heart back into rhythm and it functioning properly, that that will help in that endeavor and a lot of other areas. And so, uh, but pray for Brother John as he recovers from that, uh, and uh, that uh, his legs will be, he said his legs was doing, I called him tonight, uh, was doing a little bit better from, from uh, earlier today. And, and so just pray that he'll continue to, to uh, grow stronger. Also, I uh, want you to be praying for Marcia Merrick. She uh, uh, is dealing with a lot of pain down her spine and, and from her back area. And so... Uh, I guess the pain has got, had gotten so bad that uh, they were trying to get something done and they were, the appointment wasn't looking, looking like it was going to happen until in December sometime. And obviously when you're going through pain, you want it as soon as possible. And uh, well, apparently some, somehow, some way, uh, they got... Uh, an appointment scheduled for noon tomorrow. So uh, they are treating this as an emergency. And so uh, she's going to have an MRI done uh, noon tomorrow, and then they'll go from there. So pray for Marcia uh, Merrick as she uh, goes through this. And so, all right, I know she just has a lot of pain there. I was told tonight that um, um, Leonard and Juanita, they are um, making the decision to sell their house and move into Aspen Trace. And so something came available there. And so that's the direction after uh, family council and all of that. That's what they've decided to do. And so uh, we want you to be praying for them as they make this move. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's one of those transitions that uh, uh, is a part of life. And, and so pray for God's will to be done. And, and uh, I pray that it, it, is, it is what is best for them. And so uh, be praying for uh, Juanita and Leonard, okay? All righty, um, if you have a prayer request tonight, let's go ahead and let it be known at this time. Barbara? All right, pray for Vicki. Uh, she uh, has a scope done in the morning, so pray for uh, God's will to be done there. Susan?
All right, pray. Rest in assured. Pray for Mike Hopper. He starts his cardiac rehab this Friday. And then also pray for a, a man by the name of Dustin Short. He uh, got hit uh, uh, on the road trying to help someone and uh, broke both legs and, and uh, he's in critical condition. So Dustin Short, just pray for God's will to be done there. Susan? All right, pray for Don Grant's son, Harley is his name. Uh, Harley's having some difficult times right now uh, living out of his truck. And uh, so pray for God's will there, okay? Somebody else? Mary? Roseanne Gentry, uh, just informed, has COVID, and she's, she'll be in quarantine till the 24th, uh, so pray for her. Susan? All right, Susan's brother Brad has COVID also, so pray for him. All right, somebody else, you have a, yes, Lord. Struggling with money. With, okay, I'm sorry. You said struggling with your niece. Hmm. All right, pray for Laura's brother's family. God knows what's going on there. Um, and it has to do with Laura's niece. Uh, and so pray. Pray for uh, that family, Laura Clausen's brother's family, okay? They live up in Colorado, so. All right, somebody else, you have a prayer request? Brother Paul. All right. Brother Paul and Daphne, uh, they, as many of you already know, they, they have three children still at, uh, in their country, um, Haiti, and um, they're um, trying to get them here, and uh, two of them have been approved. Um, the third one is still in the process of that being done. But there's still a lot of, unfortunately, there's a lot of red tape. And with what's going on, uh, uh, it's slow 
slow work in the immigration system. And uh, so uh, we've been praying and, and sending uh, emails and talking, but you can only do so much. Uh, but um, uh, so church, once again, you know, let's put this family on your prayer list and, and let's pray for a miracle that uh, uh, somehow or another that, you know, we can, you know, they can get through this red tape and, and get this done. So I can only imagine what Paul and Daphne are going through. Uh, but um, uh, let's, uh, let's, if anything, let's be praying, okay? And we'll keep you updated as we know things and, and just pray for God's will to be done, okay? All right. Somebody else? You have a prayer request. Susan? Pray for Henry. Uh, we have been praying concerning his infection, and it seems like that infection is still there. And so, uh, whether it's another possibility of a surgery, uh, uh, we don't know that for sure yet. But well, we want you to be praying in that in that regards. Okay, uh, Cindy and Henry. This is regarding Henry's foot. And the infection that's there. Okay? All right. All right. Anybody else? You have a prayer request? Okay. Church, may I remind you to be praying for our country? Praying uh, for uh, its leadership. And uh, both not only nationally, uh, federally, but also state and local wise. Okay? Um, we also want you to be... Uh, at least be mindful of it anyway, uh, and uh, put this, uh, we mentioned it Sunday as far as uh, Brother Barnes and his back situation, and uh, I have not communicated with him since Sunday, but uh, uh, I know he was on the mend, but um, please continue to pray for that situation. Also, as we mentioned earlier, or before, uh, pray for Emma. And uh, God's will there as well, okay? Um, we, as we head into the uh, Thanksgiving season and, and all of that, uh, we're mindful of the uh, bread of life and uh, uh, all, of, all of what's going on there. And uh, we want you to be praying for these ministries, uh, the bread of life ministry, and uh, that God would use it to, to bless many needy families. And so that's what we'll be praying for tonight, the Bread of Life ministry. And uh, so um, whether they're in your pew or up here at an altar someplace, let's spend some time in prayer uh, with these that you've heard. And then we'll uh, close, I'll close this in prayer. We'll get right into the, to the Word of God tonight, okay? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer.
Our Father, tonight, thank you that we can come together as believers. And, and Lord, we know that it is your will that matters. And we don't always know why things happen the way they do. And, and sometimes it seems to go so fast. At times it seems it, it is so slow. It's, and at times, Lord, it seems like there is no answer from heaven. But Lord, we know that you are faithful and that, that you are true to what you've said. And Lord, it is you that we put our trust in, even though we don't always understand. And so, Lord, would you encourage us tonight from thy precious word, help us to take the next step, help us to trust you one more day, and Lord, may we truly desire you. Uh, do a work in our hearts tonight. Lord, you know the needs that are here, so I pray that you would meet those needs tonight. And uh, Lord, thank you for what you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you would tonight, <clears throat> take your Bible and turn to the book of <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians in chapter <clears throat> number 5. 1 Thessalonians in chapter number 5. We started last Wednesday concerning a church that is hopeful, a church that looks to the future, a church that truly <clears throat> um, desires what the Lord would have. And last week we talked about that a, a church that is hopeful, by the way, in verse number 3 of chapter 1 of First Thessalonians, um, makes reference to it there even, it says... Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And, is, and, it, and it is this patience of hope or endurance uh, <clears throat> in our Lord Jesus Christ. And according to verse 13 of chapter 3 of 1 first, of, of, uh, first Thessalonians, we read this. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our, our Father, at the coming of our Lord and Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. And so <clears throat> we are referring to that we have hope as a church in that one of these days the Lord's coming back. It is something that we believe in. It is something that we look to. And, uh, and so last week we talked about one of the aspects of a, of a hopeful church is, is, is an enduring church. In other words, it is a church that endures what we go through now, knowing that one of these days we're going to go home. One of these days uh, the Lord's coming back and, and we're out of here. But until then, until that happens, it is that, it is that belief that knowing that, boy, I tell you, I know it's hard, but I'm going to keep on going because I know uh, one of these days the Lord's, Lord's coming back. We talked about that. Uh, tonight, we're going to continue that. And, and another thing, not only will, be, will, will, will we, and we ought to be an enduring church, but secondly, tonight, or we are to be a ready church. Well, what do you mean, preacher? We ought to be a ready church. Ready for what? Well, I, I'm glad you said that because, you know, obviously the Lord is coming back. We believe without a doubt. But we ought to be ready for that. Well, in 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5, it actually describes this. And I want to bring to your attention tonight, and, and, I, and I hope you listen. I hope and pray that God will speak to your heart. But the Bible says it like this. I'm going to start with verse 1. First, first Thessalonians in chapter 5, verse 1. But the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. The Bible says in verse number 2, For yourselves know perfectly, are completely, that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 
And so, so this subject matter of the Lord coming back, but he, he mentions before I get started here, he says, there's really no need uh, concerning uh, these times, uh, the seasons, especially in regards to the day of the Lord or the, you know, the coming of the Lord. Uh, he says, I, I have no need that I write unto you because he says, for yourselves know perfectly. In other words, what Paul was saying was, I have already taught you about this. That's what he's saying. In other words, he, he's telling them and he's reminding them, there's really no need for me to, 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 to tell you about this because, you know, you already know this, don't you? And, and without a doubt, that's, that's one thing that as a church, we ought to be aware of the fact that, you know, the Lord is coming back. And, and, and we ought to be aware of it and it ought to, it ought to work in our church, it ought to work in our lives uh, with that truth and, 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 the, and the truth that we're going to see tonight that it ought to cause us to be ready. For the Bible goes on and says it like this, just by way of some description here, we'll get down to our messes here in just a moment, but the Bible describes the, that the day of the Lord describes it like a thief in the night. In other words, it's obviously no one ever likes to be robbed, right? No one ever, ever wants to all of a sudden, you know, notice or, or maybe you're sleeping in your house and a robber comes in and you're totally unprepared and all that. Well, Believe it or not, the Apostle Paul describes the day of the Lord like a thief in the night. In other words, it is something you're not going to be ready for. Now think about that. It, it is not something that you're going to be aware of because it's described that way. Now, yes, I know that we're saved, but, but, but we'll get to that point here in a minute. But he, but he says to these Thessalonians, he says... For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And so please, you know, may we not be so concerned about, okay, I need to find out when the Lord's coming back. That's really not what you and I ought to be trying to find out. The, problem, the thing is, what, what ought to concern you and I is us being ready when he comes, whenever that might be. And, and so, so often more people are more concerned about trying to figure out the, the, you know, the time and the day and all of that stuff. And they get so caught up in that, but they themselves are not ready when it does happen. For the Bible goes on and says, again, describing the day of the Lord, he says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. In other words, we that are saved, it, it's, it's, it's different because we know about that day. We know that it is coming and we know, and the, and the answer to that is we are to be ready because we are people of the day, not of the night or of, of darkness. We are saved, folks. That's what it's referring to. Let me, let me simply quickly say this to you concerning the day of the Lord. One writer put it and described, it's referring to Christ's advent when he descends from heaven in glory for the, uh, for the resurrection of the dead. And by the way, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 describes part of that. But not only that, it also makes reference to the judgment of the, of the world. And so when the Lord comes back, I tell you, it is, it, is, it is something that you and I ought to no doubt be aware of as far as it's going to happen. But I tell you, you know, the Lord's coming back. And, and for, for us that are saved, I tell you, it's, 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 it's a glorious time because we get to go home. But for the world, not so much. And that is true. And, uh, and so, but we find, though, that Paul then 
is trying to encourage these Christians. And he's trying to wake them up, if I may say it like that. As far as the, the day of the Lord and, and, and that we are to be ready for this. For the Bible says, notice if you would, let me read it again, verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Verse 5, ye are all the children of light and the, and the children of the day. You notice the words light and day. They are synonymous in, in, in the respect of the truth and, and, and of God. And, and, and it goes on and it says, ye are all the children of light and, and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. And folks, I want you to understand carefully that, that Paul is making, making a great distinction of the world and then those that are saved. And he says, we're not in darkness. In other words, we don't live there. Darkness referring to sin and evil and those things. And, and, and he says, you know, church, if you and I are going to be ready, you know, this is, this is, this is who we are. And this is what we are to do. We are of the light. We're not of darkness. And the Bible goes on and says it like this in verse number five. Our verse number six, therefore, let us not what? Let us not sleep as do others. So apparently there were those that were sleeping. And so what is he talking about? I don't know about you, but I like sleep. I, especially when I don't get enough of it. But that's not what it's referring to here. It's talking about spiritual, spiritual. In other words, in the respect of it's metaphorically to denote religious carelessness. That's what it's referring to. Let us not sleep. Let us not be aware of what's going on. Let us not be uh, so casual that we're, we, we're not ready when the Lord comes back. Let us not you know, take, take for granted what God has done for us. That's what he's referring to. And so he says... Uh, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Three things that I want to bring quickly to your mind. First of all, this whole idea, apparently there's one thing that the church could do in not being ready, and that is this, sleep. In other words, we could be so religiously careless about what our duties are. We could be so careless about the things that God has truly given us, but we don't take advantage of them. Like, for example, I believe assembling ourselves together is not only a great privilege that we have, but it is of necessity, right? Sure it is. I know who I'm talking to, but I'm afraid we're going to lose that. And we're going to be so careless about it. Oh, I'll, I'll go whenever I, you know, I feel like it. But sadly enough, some never get to the point where they want to do it. And then when they finally wake up, they can't do it. I've seen that happen so many times. And I tell you, if there's a sin that we as a church must own, and that is this, we are a little careless concerning our duty here upon this earth in regarding to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, we, we've, we've become very careless when it comes to prayer. We just don't pray like we used to. We've become so careless when it comes to holiness, allowing God to change us and desiring to please Him more than pleasing our flesh and the things of this world. And we've become so careless, we've, we've just kind of taken it for granted that God loves us, and, uh, but, but I can live my life however I want to. We've become careless in, the, in that regard. I tell you, what's, what, what, what's the results of that? It puts the church to sleep. That's what it does. It puts the church to sleep. In other words, what it means is that we are not aware. We're not on guard. We're not watching. We're so preoccupied. And, and so the things of God are not important to us. We are sleeping spiritually. And so Paul here is encouraging and in strengthening the Thessalonian church. And he's reminding them, hey, we are children of the light. 
We are children of the day. We're not of the night. In other words, this is not how we're supposed to live. Now, the world, yes, they live that way. They live in immorality. They live in ungodliness. But we who are children of the light, we who are children of the day, we're not supposed to live there. That's not what's supposed to be in our lives. Because of who we know and what God is doing in our lives. But you know what? The church could sleep. If you and I are not careful, we could sleep. Maybe tonight, you that are uh, watching online, is it a possibility that we have gone asleep and we're not even aware of it? We're sleeping and we're not supposed to be sleeping. We're not supposed to be taking a nap, if you please. I love naps, but not spiritually. Not spiritually. By the way, there's not a time that I'm aware of that spiritually we can take a break from God. That we can close our eyes and say, you know what, no problem. There's no worries. Oh, without a doubt, the devil is, is like a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't sleep. Neither should you and I, spiritually speaking. We should always be pursuing the Lord. We should always be striving to please him. We should always be uh, on guard, if you please. Not sleeping. Maybe one of, the, one of the signs of the church is sleeping is their attendance goes down. Maybe one of the signs of, of sleeping is immorality is flooding the church. Maybe one of the signs of sleeping is can't get anyone to prayer meeting. Why? Is it not important to pray? Is it not imp important to... You understand what I'm saying. I mean, we can have every excuse that we can think of. Well, it's my family, it's my job, you know, I don't know what else. But it, it, it's got to become a priority because of what is at stake. And so are we guilty of sleeping spiritually? Well, Paul said it like this. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Would we be considered one of the others? But secondly tonight, not only are we not to sleep, but we find we are to, according to what the Bible says, we are to watch. We are to watch. See, in being ready, well, it comes along with the word of being watchful. To be ready, to be watchful. What do you mean watchful? The ideal is this, to watch, to watch, is wakefulness from sleep. Watchful, uh, on our guard, to be on our guard. That's the idea of being watchful. This ideal of being ready is to be on guard to, to uh, be aware of, of what's going on. To not sleep, but, but to watch for the enemy, if you please. We know that the enemy, the nature of the enemy is to advance, right? We know that the nature of the enemy is, the intent is to destroy, based upon First Peter, anyway. We know that the nature of the enemy is to lie. The nature of the enemy is, to, is for trickery, to deceive. That's, that's, that's his nature. We know that. Well, in order to, to not be deceived, in order to, we've got to be watchful. We've got we to be aware. We've got to watch out for it. And when it happens, catch it and say, nope, not giving in to that. But you've got to be on guard. You've got to be watchful. You've got to watch. And when the enemy makes a move, hey, we saw that. Nope, nope. Be careful, because when we, when we watch, we can then prepare, right? When we watch, we can, we can, we can uh, have safeguards, and, and when we watch, we can, we can go the other direction and get away from evil. By the way, that's what the Bible says to do when it comes to sexual sins. It says to run. Did you know that? And by the way, you run away from it, not to it. You, you run away from it. By the way, wasn't that what Joseph was doing? 
the day when she, she approached him, attacked him, and tried to take his clothes off, what did he do? <laughs> he ran. She got his coat, but he ran. You know, you and I, we need to be watchful. Watchful, be ready. Because I believe without a doubt the devil, you know, sadly enough, we live in a time today, the devil doesn't even hardly mask himself anymore. He's out there in full force. And what has happened? What has happened to us? And so I challenge you tonight, church, help us in order to be ready. May we be watchful. May we be watchful. Not only watching for the enemy as far as on guard there, but oh, I tell you, we've got to be looking unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. You know, some people, they're just all about watching for the enemy. And hey, that's important. But you know, we need to keep our eyes up looking for one of these days he's coming back. For our redemption draweth nigh. And so I challenge you tonight, may we be watchful. May we look. But there's another one. For he says, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us be sober. The word sober there, one defined it free from intoxication. So one definition of it. Sober, to be free from intoxication. Well, that's a pretty big word. So one might say, well, how I don't understand what that word means, much less the sober part. Well, <clears throat> I have a little bit of insight when it comes to that whole intoxication thing. I am very much aware of intoxication, not so much my experience personally, but because of who I was involved with. I've watched many of people become intoxicated with a substance called alcohol. What do you mean, preacher? Well, <clears throat> I've seen people consume alcohol in various forms. But they would consume alcohol to the point that alcohol took over them. They were intoxicated with it. And, there, and sadly enough, it was the alcohol that was controlling everything. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. But you and I, with that definition in mind, we are to be sober. And we are to be free from intoxication. We are to... In other words, it's this ideal is, and, 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 and the reason why I use the analogy of alcohol is because once someone is intoxicated with alcohol, they lose all control. They are unaware of what's going on. Do you know that? Oh, I've seen it many of time. Where, where uh, they were to turn, by the way, they're driving and they're drunk which, by the way, is never a good idea. But they were supposed to turn right, but they turned left. They thought they were turning right, but they were turned left. They didn't have a clue what they were doing. They were to stop at a stop sign. They totally missed it. Hey, there was a stop sign. Where? I didn't notice it. You get the point. And yet, spiritually speaking, you and I are to be sober. We are to be, if I may put it like this, in control free from intoxication, free from intoxication of this world, but truly in, 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 in control, but not so much us controlling, but the Spirit of God leading and controlling in our lives. And, 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 and so Paul is calling upon the church not only to be watchful, but also to be sober, to be, if I may put it like this, in control in other words, in control of our senses, guarded at all times, and, and we're, not, we're not consumed by our flesh and living by our flesh, though that happens all the time in the church. But we are to be sober. 
the word sober also lends itself to the ideal of armed and prepared. Sober. In control and ready to fight. Whatever happens. An intoxicated person, someone that is consumed with alcohol, they are no more prepared than anything. They are an easy mark. I can remember, sadly enough, as a young man, my uncle and my dad, when they got together, everything was fine, that is, until my uncle got drunk. He was a redhead. And so, but for some reason... When he got drunk, he was not a happy drunk. And you know what? He wanted to fight. Every little thing bothered him. You know, because he was so consumed with alcohol. And, and so, you know, he wanted to be the man. He wanted to show himself to be the tough guy. Sheesh. And my dad who was not drunk, but here they go. You can, you can tell. My uncle would start agony him on, and come on, come on, you sissy, and blah, blah, and all that stuff. And, and to the point, my uncle would start swinging. By the way, a drunk man doesn't swing very good. So my dad would move back and miss it, and and my dad would say, you might say, well, preacher, how do you know all this? Because I was standing right there. I was watching the whole thing. I'm a little kid. But I could hear my dad says now, Red, knock it off. Come on, Red. You don't, no, no, back off, Red. Here he comes. He's staggering all over the place and he's swinging. And then, then it happened. Because my uncle... He was no match at all for my dad. My dad punched him one time. He hit the floor. That was it. When the church is not sober, listen to me, church, we become such an easy target. But when we are sober, spiritually speaking, what that means is we are, we are in control by the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, we are yielded to the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God is leading, and the church is following the Spirit of God. And I tell you, without a doubt, we're ready, we're prepared. But you know, when we are not, we're not sober, people get in trouble. People get involved in things they should not. You know, if you, if you would have been sober, you would have missed that. If you, would have been soldier, uh, and, and if you would have been sober, you would not have gone in that direction. You would not have yielded to that. And so Paul reminds the church here. He says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober. By the way, he uses the word sober again. Do you see it? Because it has to do with being prepared and armed and ready. And the reason why I say that, because look what's coming. Let us, but let us who are of the day be sober. Well, a sober person is prepared and ready because he says, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. In other words, you know what he's referring to, putting on the armor of God, get it on. Well, a sober, a sober person would do that because they are prepared and they are ready. And so he says, put it on the breastplate of faith and, and love and, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. In other words, you know, 
the, the, the Christian has the helmet on, which is a constant reminder of what Jesus Christ did for us and that we are, we're safe with him. We belong to the Lord. Boy, how important that is to not forget that. Sober. The Bible says it like this. Verse 9, listen carefully. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Boy, what a precious thought that is. Knowing that we are saved and that no matter whether we die or live, we know this, we're going to be with him. That's that helmet that we put on. That, you know, that's something that we don't forget. That's something, especially when we go through hard times and, and we face the enemy and all that stuff. But we are sober be, and, and it keeps us in check because of what, the truth of what God has said. We just keep marching on. And so we, the church is putting on the armor and, and, and we're, we're prepared, we're ready, and we are watchful. One more scripture and I'm done. Verse 11, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also you do. Amen. I believe as a church, we ought to be a church, but we ought to be a church together. How come? So we, we can comfort one another, so we can edify one another, so we can encourage others along. Because you see, we ought to be a hopeful church. A hopeful church, knowing this. One of these days, the Lord's coming back. But he hasn't come back yet. So what are we doing in the meanwhile? Well, we're going to be an enduring church because we have hope. We're also going to be a ready church. I don't know when he's coming back, but he's coming back. And we're going to be ready. What does that mean, being ready? Well, we're not going to sleep, but we're going to watch and we're going to be sober. Amen. I hope tonight you can say, I'm watching. I am sober. I'm not sleeping. Father, I pray tonight, encourage your church. Lord, help us to, in spite of all that's going on, and that, Lord, we as a church, we won't give in. Lord, that we would always be watchful. We would be sober. Lord, not intoxicated with the things of this world, and, but, Lord, we would be truly controlled by you, following you and obeying you, Always, ever ready until you call us home. But until then, Lord, may we always look to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.